Hello AstroFam and uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most significant transits, one of the most important transits of 2023, Saturn going into Pisces. For my Saturn and Aquarius folks out there, myself included, this is the end of your Saturn return. And I can tell you, I am so excited for it. <laughs> I'm probably the most excited for it that I've, that I've ever been. I'm so looking forward to it being over, not because it was not a good time, but because it was a little bit of an isolating time, if I'm being very honest. But I'm going to save all of that for a different video. I'm not going to tell you my Saturn return uh, story. So Saturn transited Aquarius. As of 2020, it spent sometime in Aquarius uh, from March 21st, 2020 until the 1st of July, 2020. Uh, then it moved back into Capricorn and then it moved into Aquarius on the 16th of December until the 7th of March, 2023. So that is December, 2020 until the 7th of March of 2023. Now Saturn's gonna slide into Pisces on the 7th of March, 2023. And it will stay there until February of 2026, February 13th, 14th of 2026, depending on where you live in, in the world. Throughout this period, which is like a three-year long period, it will get a little bit out of Pisces and spend some time in Aries between the 24th of May, 2025 until the 31st of August, 2025. So for a few months in 2025, it's going to go into Aries, Saturn and Pisces, folks. Um, those of you who have uh, natal Saturn in, uh, in Pisces, we're going to be experiencing your Saturn return. You're going to get a little bit of a breather, just a little bit, but your full-blown Saturn return ends in February of 2026. Now, how can you tell if you're going to be experiencing your Saturn return? Which, by the way, is a very significant chapter astrologically in people's lives. Very, very significant. It happens roughly once every three decades, approximately three decades. So if we're lucky, we get to experience three Saturn returns in, uh, in a lifetime. The majority of people will experience the first and uh, the second. The first Saturn return is a rite of passage from young adulthood into full-blown adulthood. It is time to commit to long-term goals, to long-term plans, to become our own source of authority. It is a time when some of the dreams and the illusions and the aspirations of youth that are not grounded in reality are going to be um, dissolved and we're leaving them uh, behind. It is a time of sustained work, effort of proving ourselves in some shape or form in the 3D material world. Uh, generally, uh, Saturn transits and especially the Saturn returns, they do bring some sort of significant endeavor, a piece of work for us to focus on with, with patience, um, to basically go through a long period of grinding, I'd say, Saturn returns also have a way of indicating what has run its course in our life and what is ready to be discarded so that we can build a solid foundation for the next three decades in our life. Um, no pressure, folks, but the Saturn return is a time to build the foundation for what your next three decades will look like, especially when it comes to the 3D material reality. Saturn is a planet very strongly connected with work and therefore also with our professional life. A lot of people in some shape or form um, may feel like work becomes even more of a, uh, I don't want to call it a burden, but an even more important duty during the Saturn return. Some people change careers during Saturn returns or they commit to a path that they weren't maybe mm, super, super sure about before the Saturn return. And as the Saturn return uh, kicks in, it's like, okay, this is it. I really need to become very good at this. I need to become an expert. I need to put time, effort, energy into mastering this aspect of my life. 
Saturn transits in general are about mastery. They do present us with the opportunity to become an authority in something. Now, uh, becoming an authority in something doesn't necessarily mean that we will become an authority in the professional sphere, although it could, uh, it could be like that for some people. And I'm going to share for whom exactly that is likely to be the case uh, during um, the transit of Saturn through Pisces. Sometimes we are called to become an authority into uh, in in a more in a different space of our uh, of our life for instance when it comes to relationships or intimacy or health um, many times we are not as humans we are not motivated enough <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about ourselves as as humans as if someone could have a different experience as aliens for instance you have to you have to excuse me <laughs> um Sometimes it is very hard for us to commit to something for the long run and to put effort into mastering something unless we are motivated by some sort of challenge, by some sort of test, by some sort of obstacle. It is not unheard of for someone to become an authority in matters of nutrition, for instance, if they have experienced health-related challenges. And if they put the time and the effort and the energy and the commitment into getting to understand their body better, getting to understand um, how their body reacts to certain nutrients and so on. So think of it this way. Saturn transits in general, they do bring with them the opportunity for us to master something after we have been presented with some sort of obstacle, challenge, problem, bump in the road in the 3D material reality. Saturn is also father of time and many times we are confronted with the consequences of time <laughs> during uh, important Saturn transits. I want to say also, especially during the Saturn return, but not only during the Saturn return, um, also during Saturn transits uh, to our natal planets and so on. So those of you taking a little bit of a step back, I realize that I'm rambling a lot. I'm excited. I've got a lot to share about Saturn and Pisces. Um, my my natal chart is quite Saturnian in, in nature. I have a moon in Capricorn and a sun in Aquarius. Um, both of these signs are ruled by Saturn. I also have Mercury uh, in uh, in Aquarius. Again, Saturn ruled sign. And of course, my natal Saturn is in Aquarius. So I have a lot of Capricorn and Aquarius energy in my chart. Therefore, Father Saturn <laughs> is an energy that I am intimately connected with. And sometimes I'm like, why does it have to be so hard? But I have to give Saturn credit for whatever it is that I've worked hard for. I have been rewarded. And uh, I know that some traditional astrologers out there, if there are any watching this, might say things like, yes, but you've got a dignified Saturn. You've got a strong Saturn in Aquarius. And that is why you have been rewarded. Anywho, I'm not going to go into that. So... Those of you who um, were born between, let's see, let's see, let's see, February of 91 until the 20th of May of 93, and also from, if you were born between the 29th of June 93 until the 28th of January 94, you are completing your Saturn return, your first Saturn return as we speak on the 7th of March, when Saturn gets out of Aquarius. Who are the folks that are going to be experiencing their Saturn return with Saturn going into Pisces? Those of you who were born between the 20th of May, 1993, until the 29th of June, 1993, and those of you born between the 28th of January, 94, until the 6th of April, 96. And... There are some people who are going through their second Saturn return. It is those people born between the 23rd of March, 1964, until the 16th of September, 64. 
and those of you born between the 15th of December 64 until the 3rd of March 67. Now, those of you who are going through the second Saturn return, what is that all about? Well, in a way, you are completing a cycle of manifestation, of building, of achievement in the 3D material reality. It's almost like it is a time to take stock of what you have achieved in the 3D material reality, not just professionally, but also have you built a family? Have you built a home? Um, have you achieved your goals and objectives uh, in the 3D material reality? Have you taken care of your body? Um, what is it that you have built behind almost as a tangible legacy? Take stock of that and be prepared to let it go. Be prepared to let it go. <laughs> um, the second Saturn return is this rite of passage between our sense of achievement uh, being tied in with material achievements in the world, be it money, family status so like raising a family it's like a very hard thing obviously it's like a lot of like duties and responsibilities and hard work and so on so it is the rite of passage the second Saturn return between achievements in the 3d material reality and building a legacy maybe for generations to come it is time to pass on the torch it is time to see ourselves as the wise I was about to say old, but I'm not saying old in a in a in a negative way, in a derogatory way. In in today's society, we are so afraid of growing old, so afraid, and uh, old age is is kind of like is something that we are trying to erase from I don't know, like movies, advertising, from our faces, from our experiences. But what is the alternative? It's death, isn't it? So if we're not growing old, it means that we're probably dead. So it is time to see ourselves as someone who's got like a lot of experience in the 3D material reality. And it is time to pass on that wisdom. Now, the alternative to that is to become very embittered. It's like back in the day, you know, these people who say things like that back in the day when I was young, they would do it like this and they would do it like that. And there is sort of like this attachment to old structures. You could say that technically every Saturn return is an invitation to build new structures in our life. It is an invitation uh, towards new achievements i'd i'd say generally in astrology the conjunction between two planets and the saturn return is of course transiting saturn coming back to the sign where your natal saturn was placed at the time when you were born the conjunction is seen as especially in transit as uh, having the energy of a new beginning so every ending is 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 a new beginning it is also a time, especially the second Saturn um, return, to face the consequences. Saturn is, is the planet of karma in the 3D material reality. Uh, it is time to face the consequences of what we have done repeatedly and put a lot of effort and energy and patience into, or, or on the contrary, what we have avoided. Because let me remind you folks, especially those of you who are maybe like newer to astrology, and there could be a lot of people who are new to astrology, and I'm more than happy to share. The transits of Saturn at their core, regardless of where they're happening in our chart, regardless of whether we're experiencing a Saturn return or the transit of Saturn through, I don't know, our ninth house of higher education, the transits of Saturn, they always carry with them the energy of our natal Saturn placement. So let's say there's someone who has natal Saturn in the seventh house of relationships in Aries, right? What does that tell us? Well, a few things. Uh, the fact that the person has to kind of like somehow learn, put effort, uh, work hard to... Um, maintain their sense of identity 
uh, and um, individuality, even when they are in a uh, relationship, they have to work hard in a relationship to learn to assert themselves, to learn to not run away from, from conflict, maybe to not run away when it comes to relationships, uh, to not run away from, from um, risk taking, to not run away from bold, um, from bold moves. Um, there's something around learning to take also the initiative in relationships, even though <laughs> Oh, we've got Max joining us. There's something around like learning for Saturn and Aries people uh, in the seventh house, uh, learning to take the initiative in relationships, even though it may not necessarily be something that uh, they are very comfortable with and so on. So let's say you've got this natal Saturn placement. Well, all the transits of Saturn, <laughs> regardless of whether they're happening in your 10th house, in your 12th house, uh, in your first house of the physical body, in some shape or form, they are meant to remind you and to tell you, listen, this is your work. This is your job in this lifetime. This is your homework. This is what you're here to put effort into. This is what you're here to master, even though you may be feeling inadequate. Uh, Saturn has a way of making us feel like we're not good enough, like we haven't risen to the standards of society. We feel judged. We build defense walls. We are kind of like triggered uh, if like someone pushes those buttons for us. So... <laughs> All the transits of Saturn will carry with them the uh, energy of your natal Saturn placement. This is also why some people experience Saturn transits as harder, as more difficult than other people. Um, some people say, oh, like a Saturn transit is, was the worst time of my life. And some people say, I just worked really hard and like I achieved this, 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 this and that. And I completed my goals, etc., etc., etc. So if you learn to build... How should we put it? <laughs> a collaborative relationship <laughs> with your natal Saturn, uh, you have a much higher chance of making the most of um, Saturn transits in general. So look back at your natal Saturn placement, uh, dig in to read, ask an astrologer, consult an astrologer um, as to what your natal Saturnian lessons are, and then remind yourself of them when you are experiencing significant Saturn transits in your own natal chart. And these are going to be the times when Saturn connects uh, with one of your angles, the ascendant, the descendant, the midheaven, the IC, when Saturn forms an aspect with your natal planets, especially the personal ones, the sun, the moon, Mars, Mercury, Venus, uh, and the ruler of the ascendant, whatever the ruler of uh, the ascendant is is i'd um i'd say i feel like i've talked a lot about <laughs> saturn returns and that wasn't necessarily the point of this of this video but i do hope that this is going to i don't know maybe help people who are going through saturn returns and also help people who are going through more difficult more challenging saturn transits in general uh, especially if saturn is forming a tense aspect such as a square and opposition with your natal placements with your natal planets and in, in the birth chart um or or um if it is forming a conjunction especially with the ascendant the descendant the midheaven and your personal planets sun moon uh, venus mars mercury Oh, I remember when Saturn was conjunct my Mercury. <laughs> I had such, such a difficult, 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 difficult time finding my words. I kid you not. I kid you not. Like it was all happening in my head. But when it came to like actually like expressing what was going on in my head, it just felt like I was, whatever words I found, they weren't good enough and they couldn't express the message in the way that I wanted it to be expressed. And maybe it was just me putting pressure on myself, which is a very high possibility. But yeah, that was my that was my experience. Saturn says, "Try harder." Is this the best that you have got? I present to you, Max. Max again. He seems to be really enjoying this talk about Saturn. So let's go back to Saturn and Pisces, folks. Um, Saturn and Pisces, as I said, is going to um, stay there until February of twenty twenty six. The last couple of times when Saturn was in Pisces, the following things happened. I'll, I'll kind of like give you the highlights, some of the highlights that I've found that I've, that I've Googled um, to give you kind of like an idea as to what we can expect at a collective, at a collective level. 
So, in 1965, this was like a while back, like two Saturn in Pisces cycles ago. In 1965, uh, the Voting Rights Act was passed in the United States, prohibiting racial discrimination in voting. And the Social Security Act established uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And Cuban refugees began to arrive at the United States in October of 65. Also in June of 64, so same Saturn and Pisces uh, transit, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for what would be a decades-long sentence. During the most recent transit of uh, Saturn through Pisces, uh, PlayStation was launched, and now PlayStation is going to be experiencing its, um, its Saturn return. Um, in March of 94, the Church of England ordained the first female priests. Um, the Channel Tunnel opened, connecting Britain to France. Such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful manifestation of Saturn in Pisces. It's like Saturn building, construction, enduring, enduring structures, literally going through water, Pisces, because Pisces is a uh, water sign. So that is like a beautiful description of uh, the Saturn in, uh, in Pisces energy. Now, a less, like, an... I mean, an awful manifestation of uh, the Saturn in transit Pisces uh, that happened three decades ago was the following. Uh, France tested nuclear bombs in the Pacific Ocean. Um, this obviously caused outcry um, around the world. Saturn in Pisces at a collective level is likely to bring our attention to the oceans and the waters of the world. I would not be surprised if at a collective level uh, there could be some some sort of maybe like rationing something like rationing i'm not saying that we're not going to have access to water but there could be like a, a, a red flag that is raised around how much water maybe is wasted and how water is not used uh, properly i know there are so many industries that require so 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 much water and um I, I watched a documentary a while back around how the resources of like sweet, like drinkable water are starting to become very, very, very limited. So uh, there could be like a, a sense of increased responsibility towards how we utilize water resources in general, I'd say, during the transit of Saturn through, uh, through Pisces. How would I describe archetypally, symbolically, Saturn in, uh, in Pisces? Well, Saturn is the planet of duty, restrictions, responsibilities, uh, discipline, gravity, effort, consequences, obstacles, delays, uh, limitations, and order, order, law and order, very Saturnian. And Pisces is mutable water, so it's kind of like a very fluid, flowing, um, smooth, ethereal, without boundaries energy. Um, Pisces is very strongly associated with the imagination, with uh, sensitivity, with um, mysticism. There is a certain kind of like mystical quality about, uh, about Pisces. Um, it is a sign that is very much connected with dreams. So you could say that dreams is... is um, connected with escapism. It's kind of like the dream world, um, the world where anything is possible. <sighs> Pisces is also associated with surrendering, surrender and forgiveness, and kind of like recognizing where we need to go with the flow, where we need to learn to relax, learn to let things happen in a very kind of like flowing manner without trying to restrict, constrain, without trying to impose too strong limitations. And there is, there is a, a significant paradox that we're likely to deal with, with Saturn and Pisces. It's like, how can you build enduring structures in the realm of imagination? That is the big question of this uh, Saturnian transit. I mean... Um, 
video games is a great way to do so. Um, Saturn in Pisces is likely to ask us to master, a lot of people might experience this, uh, to master um, a creative, artistic mode of expression. A lot of artists, a lot of musicians, a lot of actors have Saturn in Pisces. So you become proficient, you become a professional, you become a master, an authority in um, expressing ourselves artistically and connecting with the imagination and it, when it comes to evoking certain feelings and emotions in others. Uh, Saturn in Pisces also looks to give um, a concrete, tangible form to the world of illusion. And what are movies and films and TV series? That's it. It's, it's like a form of escapism where um, fiction, where something that hasn't, most of the times hasn't happened in reality, is given this concrete, tangible, enduring, long-lasting form. I would also I would also see Saturn and Pisces manifesting as discipline when it comes to mystical and spiritual matters. So um, more people could gravitate towards a spiritual practice and a mystical connection with something beyond the 3D material reality. And they may feel compelled to master one of these spiritual fields. Um, we could see very likely an increase uh, in the number of people who choose to earn a living to become professionals in the spiritual sphere. Um, Pisces is also connected with healing. So a, a lot more people could uh, feel compelled to train, to become, again, proficient, to become authorities um, in the healing, um, in the healing space, I'd, uh, I'd say. Saturn in Pisces also asks us to take very, very seriously and to put effort and um, discipline into forgiving ourselves or into forgiving others, into looking after our mental health. Pisces is a sign that is connected in astrology with mental health. So a lot more people could feel like um, they are ready to go into therapy. They could feel like they are ready to um, address maybe the root cause of their emotional suffering through consistent, patient, and persistent effort, I, 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 uh, I dare say. We may feel like we uh, have a duty towards uh, giving of what we have, of our resources, especially tangible resources, such as money, but maybe also time, uh, giving of what we have to charity or towards charitable causes. Um, folks with Saturn and Pisces in their natal chart, but uh, this this placement by itself is not sufficient to indicate this. Um, so if there are some additional placements that support this, they could feel drawn to either working in uh, the artistic space, so becoming like a prof proficient, becoming professional uh, photographers or becoming um, actors, becoming musicians and so on, or they could feel drawn to the... NGO space, the space of, of, uh, of charitable organizations, um, professionally. They could also put effort into becoming professional healers. I mean, a doctor is also a healer, so you don't have to think of, I don't know, some, some sort of like woo-woo shaman. <laughs> Not that shamans are woo-woo, but Saturn really likes tradition. <laughs> So uh, unless there is kind of like a traditional, I don't know, like a uh, lineage or um, how should we call it, uh, like a long history uh, for, for a certain culture with, with shamanism, Saturn and Pisces could say, really? Really? This hasn't been happening for that long. Is this like a new age thing? 
there could also be a sense of increased responsibility uh, at a social, at a societal level towards those that are suffering, victims, refugees, very, very possibly, very, very likely. And it may feel like it is our um, duty to look after and to offer some sense of security and stability to those who have left everything behind, who have lost everything, I'd, uh, I'd say. Tangible achievements, tangible work to be done uh, in Piscean areas of life. This is the Saturn in Pisces um, overarching themes such as music, drugs, the imagination, uh, AI, virtual reality. We're called to take these very, very seriously. Um, probably some new rules and regulations in the uh, mental health space, very likely. I, I feel like we're going to take um, at, a, at a collective level mental health uh, much more seriously, which is not bad news at all, at all, at all, at all, if you ask me. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some new rules and regulations uh, when it comes to when it comes to rest, folks, when it comes to rest and relaxation and taking time off, because that is also very Piscean um, activity, we live in a society that, that is burnt out. I know for a fact that I myself was burnt out before I uh, made the switch to being a full-time astrologer. So when I was a part-time, um, when I was a part-time astrologer and I also had a uh, corporate job in advertising, it is unsustainable to live according to the uh, corporate standards of today. There is no other time for anything else other than work. And work has become unbelievably intrusive on so many different uh, levels. There's like so many apps. You're expected to like pick up uh, emails at like stupid o'clock in the middle of the night to be to respond straight away on things like like slack and if you don't respond on slack in the next five minutes people email you and if and you're like in like five whatsapp groups i'm like this is insane this is absolutely absolutely insane so taking rest seriously is probably going to be a very saturn and pisces uh theme and if it doesn't happen at a collective level certainly i will recommend that this is done at a personal level and i'm even going to share what are the signs that i believe um may need to do this the most i'd uh, i'd say last but not least if i were to make a wild recommendation <laughs> no but seriously i'm going to make a recommendation <laughs> my big thing is generally to work with the transits rather than to have them just kind of like dumped upon us. And Saturn, let's face it, not many times is like a pleasurable transit. I'm not saying that it's not productive. It can be incredibly productive. It can be incredibly useful, but it's not a Jupiter transit. It's not a Venus transit. It's a different kind of energy, right? Saturn sometimes wants us to leave behind what is no longer sustainable for the long run, what is what has run its course. Uh, so you may want to look at removing something from your life. You may want to look at ending something. Uh, you may want to look at uh, committing to a long-term path because Saturn likes long-term effort before you are faced with an actual obstacle. And if you are faced with an ac actual obstacle in the 3D material reality, my, uh, my lovelies, I'd say see it as a learning curve and see it as a as an invitation to work for the next few years, probably, in a specific direction of your life with a sense of maturity, a sense of duty, a sense of responsibility, with seriousness. And also many times, let's face it, Saturn does appreciate self-sufficiency and relying on ourselves. So there may be a need to Kind of like look at what sort of like resources, internal resources we can build so that we can go through this um, Saturn transit and come out feeling like we have accomplished something. Max has literally fallen asleep. He is completely unbothered. 
Okay, so folks, we're going to talk about the updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs. And you know me, I'm your um, weird internet mom that repeats herself. And I know that some folks might be here for the first time, so you're not going to know what on earth I'm talking about. But I basically badger people and tell them, figure out, folks, what your... <laughs> what your rising sign is before you listen to general forecasts, general horoscopes like this one. Because I'm going to give you the update for each of the 12 zodiac signs, but it's going to be done with the rising sign in mind first and foremost. And you can find out your rising sign if you know your date, time, and place of birth. The time of birth is very important. You can generate your natal chart online by inputting these, uh, these details. And then you can listen to the update, the forecast for your um, rising sign. Give me one second. I've got so many notes, so many tabs open. I need to get this. I need to get this together. I need to organize this whole, this whole thing. But I'm excited because Saturn's getting out of Aquarius, where my natal Saturn is. So <gasps> I've. Uh, I've done a lot of organization and a lot of cleaning up in the past three years of my um, of my life, folks. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So this year in particular, in 2023, because I know we're going to be talking about Saturn and Pisces for a really, really long time. In 2023, uh, Saturn is going to reach up to seven degrees of Pisces. And then it's gonna kind of like go backwards. Obviously there will be, there will be a, a retrograde. Those of you who have in your natal chart planets or natal angles, such as the ascendant or the midheaven between zero to seven, eight degrees of mutable signs, you folks are going to feel the transit of Saturn through Pisces this year the most. Okay, um, so the mutable signs are Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius, Gemini. So Saturn is speaking directly to you this uh, to you this year. Saturn is going to go retrograde on the 17th of June of 2023, and it's going to go direct on the 4th of November. So now you know, and some of the most important aspects that Saturn is making this year. Let's see, what are these? I've got a good a good piece of news, which is for most, for the second half of 2023, <laughs> I had to like take a moment to remind myself what, what year, what year this was. So uh, second half of 2023, from June onwards, essentially, Saturn and Pisces in transit is going to form a sextile, is going to be nicely aspecting uh, Jupiter and Taurus. And Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces, the traditional ruler of Pisces. So there is like an element of reception between Saturn and, um, and Jupiter. Therefore, making the second half of the year, I dare say, very productive and constructive in terms of Saturn and Pisces matters. It's almost like you're getting, like you're getting help in going through this Saturn transit. You're 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 getting help in terms of the meaning of it all, in terms of how you're going to benefit from the effort that you're making in the long run, uh, in terms of how you're likely to achieve a more secure, uh, stable, uh, even materially more prosperous uh, position in your life if you commit to something. Um, and I'm going to tell you what to commit to basically, uh, there's like a sweetening of the Saturnian kind of like dryness and, and like a certain like soberness and this sense of like responsibility with Jupiter harmoniously aspecting uh, Saturn. The sex cell is going to be at its strongest. Let's see when exactly. Let's see, let's see, let's see. In June of 2023 and January, February of 2024, my um, my lovelies, a few additional aspects that, uh, important aspects that Saturn and Pisces is making. 
And probably one of the most important ones is the aspect, the conjunction that it's making with Neptune, but that's going to happen in 2026. So we are not there yet. We're not there yet. So on the 20th of July, Mars in Virgo is going to oppose Saturn in Pisces. Um, this is where we may feel like we want to move forward with something done in a very kind of like meticulous and fastidious and like detail oriented way. And we're like, yeah, I want to get this done now. I want to move forward with it. But Saturn and Pisces says, nope, nope. You have hit a wall here and uh, you have like some greater duties, some greater responsibilities in a Piscean arena of your life. Maybe in looking after your mental health and taking care of someone who is suffering and uh, becoming more proficient at uh, something of a maybe spiritual or artistic nature. So that's like a very strong activation. On the 2nd of August, Mercury will oppose Saturn in Pisces. And on the 27th of August, the sun will oppose Saturn in Pisces. I think these are probably some of the kind of like most important um, triggers that Saturn is uh, that Saturn is receiving tense triggers that Saturn is receiving this uh, this year. These are times when we are really reminded of our long term task, regardless of whether uh, we would uh, like to move foster in a different direction or not. So patience is of the essence. Of course, there's going to be some nice aspects to Saturn. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's going to be like uh, Venus harmonious aspects. Uh, there's going to be like harmonious aspect, the harmonious aspect from, from Jupiter, especially in June and January, February of 2024. Uh, <laughs> we have a saying in, in, uh, in my natal Romania, um, it's not, <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> Let's put it this way. It could be worse. It could be worse. Okay, folks, let's talk about the updates for each of the 12 zodiac, uh, each of the 12 zodiac signs. Let's see, let's see, let's see what you folks can expect from this transit. We are obviously going to start with Aries, Aries suns and Aries risings. My lovely Aries, Saturn on the 7th of March, all the way until February of 2026. I apologize. I need to get into like a better, kind of like a more comfortable like position. Here is Max in case you, you've missed him. He's sleeping. Very, very Piscean of him. So my dear Aries, Aries suns and Aries risings. On the 7th of March until February of 2026, uh, Saturn enters your 12th house. Uh, the house of retreat, of surrender, of letting go, of introspection, of mental health, of self-sabotage. Um, it is traditionally a house of hidden enemies, but I do believe that we are likely to be our worst hidden enemies if we do not process our shadow, if we avoid certain aspects of our life that uh, we have uh, that we have repressed, that we're kind of like shoving under the under the rug. So this Saturn transit is about very, very likely getting very serious about your mental health, especially Aries risings, getting serious about uh, taking care of your mental health, uh, putting effort into um, looking after yourself from that perspective, putting effort into winding down. Uh, now, you don't want to go through a burnout so that you realize I need to wind down every now and then. So my recommendation would be to consciously set aside time to uh, unwind, to uh, relax, to take time away from um, to take time away from work. It is also a time to get serious about clearing out the structures in your life that are no longer working. My lovely Aries, especially Aries risings. I would look in particular at career structures that are no longer working. So career goals and objectives that you need to move past. I would also look at friendships, friendships, um, clubs, groups of people that you are a part of. It may be time to slowly start kind of like making an exit out of these um, 
committees or out of these organizations or it is time to slowly st uh, start pruning your circle of friends because not everyone that um has been uh, a friend is likely to continue to be a friend i mean at the end of this transit you might look back and say okay so i used to have this like huge group of people and now it is not what it used to uh it's not what it used to be now what i like is that from june onwards until february of 2024 but especially in june and in january and february of 2024 jupiter in your second house my lovely aries is harmoniously aspecting saturn and pisces in the 12th house i feel like you are starting to develop yourself in a behind the scenes way you're starting to build something behind the scenes uh that could generate significant income and a significant increase in income and in material security and stability for you moving forward i'd i'd say and you clearing out the debris of your psyche of your subconscious may also result in a tremendous increase in terms of your sense of self-worth and self-esteem my lovely aries so it's worth doing the clearing out now if you are a taurus sun or a taurus rising my lovely taurians saturn is going to transit your 11th house of of friends groups of people goals social and humanitarian ideals from the 7th of March until the middle of February of 2026. Uh, for you, Taurians, let's see, Saturn rules your ninth house and your 10th house. It feels like you are committing to some long-term goals together with a group of people throughout this period. So for instance, you may uh, become part of a professional organization. You may take on the role of the manager, the planner, the organizer of group type of activities. You may feel the pressure of duties and responsibilities towards a committee, towards an organization in your uh, in your life. It could be uh, on an organization that also has like some charitable um, sides to, uh, to it, or uh, a side that is maybe uh, creative and uh, and artistic you're putting effort into making your goals a tangible reality throughout this period but you might also eliminate some goals my dear um, my dear taurus goals that maybe are no longer relevant for where you're looking to take your life in the long uh, in the long run remember that saturn does not like scattered it likes focused it likes commitment it likes um kind of like shrinking our area of focus and honing in on maybe like a set of, of of goals so my recommendation would be to not try to be all things to all people on the contrary uh it would be choose a few goals a handful of goals or maybe just a couple that you're very committed to and realize that you will not be able to do everything also, also on a more practical level, uh, there is a chance that there could be a lot less like fun involvement with um, with your friends and maybe more time spent in groups throughout this transit time spent in groups um, of a professional nature. So it's kind of like you're getting together with people, but you're getting together for like very serious uh, matters. It's like you don't have time to waste, I'd, uh, I'd say, in just kind of like, hmm, and just kind of like having fun and having no direction and no goal and no objective for like getting together with others. And I realize that socialization isn't necessarily meant to have very specific, I don't know, like goals, but you might feel like you're too busy <laughs> to waste time with light-hearted matters with your friends i'd say as i don't know awful as that might sound um taurians what i like is that from uh, june onwards of this year until february of 2024 but especially in june and in january february of 2024 uh, you seem to be growing and developing on a personal level you seem to be exploring a new side to yourself you seem to be uh, kind of like increasing your level of like faith and, and confidence in yourself um you seem to be um maybe um tapping into more of your potential together with a group of people. So my, by maybe being like an active part of a group of people in the professional sense or in a very kind of like serious goal-oriented sense. And it really feels like 
you are accomplishing things that you're proud of together with this group of people, with Jupiter sextiling Saturn in the 11th house. My dear Geminis, I'm like, Geminis! Saturn on the 7th of March until... February of 2026 is entering your 10th house of career. Increased duties and responsibilities at work, increased duties and responsibilities career-wise. You may be able to step up career-wise. You may be able to step up throughout this period to a uh, higher position. So a position of management, leadership, planning, organization. Uh, but you're going to feel the burden of being the decision maker, of being the one in charge, of being the authority. So it is not a walk in the park on the absolute Contrary, I, I dare say, my dear Geminis, it is something to take very, very, very seriously. And you are probably going to be taking it very, very, uh, very seriously. I'll just, uh, I'll just put it out there. Saturn for you, Geminis, also rules your 8th house and your ninth house. It almost feels like you are ready to put into practice in a professional setup. The experience that you have accumulated in the past roughly three years, uh, the experience that you have accumulated in a theoretical field or in the legal sphere, I, I dare uh, I dare say, uh, there is also the, the chance, the possibility that you may um, put into practice in a professional environment the academic knowledge that you have accumulated in the past three to maybe almost like six years. Very, very uh, likely, very possibly. Uh, you may have some traveling to do, a long distance travel for work. Um, maybe also uh, throughout this period, spend time working with an international office. Some Gemini Risings. Um, this is really something uh, that depends on other transits that are happening in your chart. Uh, it depends on also what your natal chart looks like. So it's not mandatory, but some Gemini Risings throughout uh, the next three years, so until February of 2026, they may decide to leave behind um, an industry, um, a role, uh, or a certain like status that they have achieved career-wise. And if that is the case, I would see it as kind of like time to move on, to move forward towards new horizons. If this is not the role or the industry or the company that you want to build a long-term future with. Now, if you are a Cancer Sun or a Cancer Rising, my lovely Cancerians, and by the way, by the way, I myself am a uh, Cancer, uh, a Cancer Rising. So I resonate a little bit to this. Um, I resonate with this. Um, I strongly recommend Cancerians that you make a commitment to uh, learn something uh, in the next few years at an academic or theoretical level. So to commit to maybe broadening your horizons, maybe sign up for like a an academic course, class. Um, you're going through a restructuring of your belief system and of your life philosophy throughout this period. Uh, so for the next three years, it may feel like your life philosophy and your set of beliefs and even your, your spiritual beliefs are tested. They are tested it against the like 3D tangible aspects of material uh, reality, you may undergo some sort of like significant change in life philosophy uh, when it comes to relationships and when it comes to partnerships, not just personal, but also business uh, wise. It is time to uh, take the legal aspect of your life very, very seriously. You may have some like duties and responsibilities in this uh, in this space to take care of, uh, especially, especially, uh, I want to say, in collaboration with someone else. So together, maybe with a business partner, it is also time to commit to achieving something maybe that has to do with foreign lands and foreign countries. So if you've been postponing the process of, I don't know, like applying for a visa or getting like a residence, or something like that. It is time, but do be prepared for delays and for a very long process because generally Saturn also brings delays. Things do not happen overnight. Um, patience and a practical approach to academic advancement may be called for throughout this period for Cancer Risings. Um, if you do travel, folks, 
Uh, it is likely to be for business rather than for fun. They do say that Saturn is a very serious planet. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. I'm gonna warn myself because I'm a Cancer rising. Um, if you have like uh, plans to travel, I would take insurance. I uh, would take very, very seriously like the travel requirements. So I would check travel requirements and stuff like that. Mm. I would also ask myself if there is any way, if there is any kind of like possibility that you could combine traveling with your work with your profession so maybe working from abroad or working remotely or kind of like setting an office in a different i don't know in a different country that would be a fabulous fabulous uh, use of this uh saturn transit i'm liking the fact that jupiter in the 11th house is sextiling saturn uh in your ninth house uh, transiting through pisces cancerians Cancer Risings, especially uh, from the 9th of June. Uh, I mean, uh, my apologies, in, in, in June in particular, in June in particular, um, in, in 2023 and in January, February of 2024. What am I seeing here? I'm seeing successful collaborations with groups of people or with audiences from a different country in the professional sense. Why? Because Jupiter also rules your sixth house of day-to-day -day work. Leo's, Leo suns and Leo risings. What can you expect from this um, Saturnian transit? So Saturn enters your eighth house in Pisces from the 7th of March of this year until February of 2026. Saturn is the ruler of your sixth house of day-to-day -day work and of your seventh house of relationships, my dear Leos. Okay, so it feels like this could be a time, especially if you're in a relationship with someone else, uh, this could be a time when your partner is going through a more challenging period financially. So you may need to like take on some of their responsibilities financially. It's not mandatory, but it is possible. Uh, you may feel an increased sense of pressure towards paying your debts. So taking care of like credits, credit cards, mortgages, and so on. Uh, the burden of debts could become like more significant. So that's why you may be... Um, motivated to get rid of them sooner rather than uh than later i mean i've experienced the transit of saturn in my eighth house and we basically so together with my partner so shared kind of like uh resources a sense of like duty a sense of responsibility in the area of shared resources uh, we've taken um throughout this period a mortgage right because we bought a house and it is a long-term thing it is a long-term commitment it is a long-term like duty of a financial nature that we need to um stick to and we need to abide by and comply with it is a great time with saturn transiting your eighth house to maybe also do some charity possibly and ask yourself do you have like uh, someone who could benefit from your resources is there like a a chance that you could like help someone uh, because they're going through like a hard uh through a hard time um it is also also the time to take very very seriously whatever it is that you're afraid of so an area of like crisis of taboo uh, of a taboo nature uh, an area that you're afraid to maybe address because you're feeling very emotionally triggered uh, the eighth house is the house of psychological transformation and with saturn transiting this part of your chart leo risings especially you may feel compelled to um go to therapy or to um to really like investigate very deeply the source of your emotional suffering and to, even though it may be unpleasant, uh, to stick with it and to kind of like get to the bottom of, of, of things, of, of maybe emotional like suffering that is getting in the way of achieving like real intimacy with your partner. Let's see, what I'm liking is, I am liking something um, in June, 
and especially from June onwards until February of 2024, uh, Jupiter in your 10th house of career is nicely aspecting Saturn in the 8th house. It feels like if you are taking on uh, increased like duties and responsibilities of a financial nature uh, connected with someone else, my lovely uh, Leos, or if you're taking on a mortgage, for instance, you're also going through uh, like a, a positive period, a period of growth from a career perspective. So you could be making more money professionally. You could be making more kind of like money. You could be growing in that direction. And that kind of like eases the burden, right? Eases the pressure. If you are a Virgo sun or a Virgo rising, my dear Virgos, Saturn enters your seventh house of relationships on the 7th of March until February of 2026. This could mean a few things. Uh, for some people, it could mean additional commitment to a partner. So it could mean engagement, marriage, moving in with a partner. It's very, very possible. It also depends on what your natal Saturn is uh, is doing. It could mean uh, joint kind of like uh, responsibilities together with a partner when it comes to, um, to children. Um, because Saturn is also the ruler of your fifth house of children. So maybe there's a sense of the relationship is becoming more serious because you're having a child. Maybe it's no longer as kind of like happy-go-lucky and it may feel like a time of restructuring and readjustment of your dynamic because of, uh, because of that. Some relationships that are not contributing to your long-term growth, they're likely to end, my dear, um, my dear Virgos. Remember that Saturn puts things to the test. And if something lasts the tests of Saturn, well, then you can like throw a party because it's probably going to last for a very, 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 very long, uh, long time. It is only under like pressure and challenges from the outside that a relationship is like truly, truly, truly tested. You can see what it's made of. And some things break under pressure. And that could be the case for certain relationships. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic relationships. It could be like business partnerships that are, that no longer hold like water, um, especially since Saturn is also the ruler of your sixth house of day-to-day -day work. Um, your partner could go through some challenges throughout this period of a health-related nature. Now, if this happens this year in 2023, then there is a very high chance that there is going to be a way for them to overcome them uh, through like knowledge, through a new perspective, through maybe like a different like philosophy, through a different way of thinking, I, I dare say. There's also a possibility that your partner, my dear um, Virgos, could travel for work, especially in the second half of the uh, of the year. If you are going through any kind of like challenges uh, in your relationship sector, sometimes Saturn brings delays or distance. So maybe your partner is likely to be at a distance from you. Maybe they're traveling. Um, in the second half of the year, Jupiter is going to nicely aspect from June onwards. Uh, Saturn in your seventh house of relationships. So it feels like even though you're going through like a testing period uh, relationship wise or a period of increased commitment, you're seeing the big picture and you're seeing how this kind of like ties in with your greater life philosophy. And it makes sense. It's like it's something that you believe in the work that you're doing together with a partner. You believe in it, which is great, because if we find meaning to things, they are much easier to endure. And it's much more likely that uh, we are going to see things through until the very end. Now, if you are a Libra sun or a Libra rising, but especially a Libra rising, Saturn will transit Pisces in your sixth house of day-to-day -day work from the 7th of March until February of 2026. It is time to take your health very seriously. It is time to give up on some unhealthy, um, some unhealthy habits. It is time to look at what needs to be removed out of your day-to-day -day life, habits-wise, work-wise, tasks-wise. Um, you could feel an increased sense of pressure connected with your, um, connected with your day-to-day -day work. Maybe you're kind of like going through a period of like grinding. There's like pressure. There's a sense of like burden, of increased discipline, of having to like, um, Really stay focused over an overextended period of times over maybe like work that isn't necessarily very, very exciting or maybe you feel like you're not very good at it. That's also a possibility. And you just have to go through like the grinding and like grin and bear it and learn from maybe like mistakes or feeling like incompetent sometimes. Not that you are incompetent, but you could feel like that because Saturn really makes us feel sometimes like we... Like we don't have what it takes and that's a great motivation to have us work harder. Um, your effectiveness is likely to be tested at work. 
Um, it is also time to attend to your health, to make necessary changes to your daily routines. You're likely to see the impact of your daily routines over time. Some of them could be like positive. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you could see like a positive impact um, of, of your habits over your health. But sometimes we also see the negative impacts, the long term negative impacts of what we've done repeatedly over our health during Saturn transits. I would introduce into your routine, into your day-to-day -day routine, maybe an activity of a Saturnian nature, such as maybe doing charity and kind of like uh, doing, doing volunteering periodically, uh, maybe also um, introducing um, a habit such as uh, regular kind of like breath work or a visualization or... Um, taking the time to, I don't know, like decompress after work, going swimming, uh, looking after your physical health in, in, uh, in water or in an environment that involves water. Uh, there could be some issues with feet, some health related issues with feet because Pisces is also like connected astrologically to feet. So don't say I didn't warn you, uh, but maybe it's a good time to try something like, I don't know, like, uh, Re reflexology please 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 this is not medical advice please take the advice of your doctor above everything else what i like is that jupiter is nicely aspecting saturn in your sixth house of day-to-day uh, -day work and health my dear libras from june onwards until february of 2024 so it feels like some of the uh kind of like uh, knowledge that you are accumulating in terms of psychology in terms of your psyche is having a positive impact upon you transforming your day-to-day -day habits routines and even work and if you're feeling like it is time to leave behind a job throughout this period which is possible I would see it as you kind of like recognizing what no longer works uh, for you on a day to day basis and really like honoring what um, brings you like peace and a sense of like inner calm, dear Libras. Now, if you are a Scorpio sun or a Scorpio rising, Saturn transits your fifth house of, of children and creative self-expression from the 7th of March until February of 2026. This is a time really for you to most likely uh, encounter or expect increased responsibilities in your life connected with kids. Some people are going to have kids throughout this period. Some people may feel like uh, the whole kind of like topic of having kids becomes more like serious and more a, a little bit more burdensome. I don't know, maybe because kids are going through like a challenging time, maybe they're like turning into teenagers and it's like a period of transition and maybe they're figuring out who they are and maybe they're working with their own like feelings and emotions and you are asked lovely parents to uh, to put effort into being understanding and to being tolerant and to being accepting and to kind of like acknowledging maybe why your kid is like suffering or going through a more challenging time it's not mandatory that they're suffering it could just be that you maybe have a little bit of a harder time understanding like why uh they're expressing emotions in certain uh in certain ways it is also a fabulous time my dear scorpios <laughs> I'm talking as if this is like a time to throw a party. It's probably not going to be a time to throw a party. I'll put it this way. Uh, less fun is quite likely, is quite likely when Saturn transits the fifth house. It's like, uh, it may feel like there's no time for fun or you've got like more pressing duties to attend to. It is, however, a good time to put commitment and effort into mastering a creative and kind of like a field. Um, it is time to build your masterpiece, I would say. It could also be a very, very good time, my dear Scorpios, to do the following. To take some like serious long-term classes and courses connected with your passions and hobbies, because Saturn also rules your third house of learning so take your passions and hobbies seriously and it is time to like dive in it is time to like really become maybe like proficient at something that you have only like a, seen as as a hobby up until this up until this point now if you are a Sagittarius sun or a Sagittarius rising in particular um Saturn transiting Pisces is going to um bring into your focus the house of home um, and family and living situation throughout this period. So it's like a 
almost like a three-year period. So March of 2023 until February of 2026. You may put significant effort into building long-term stability at home. For some people, this could mean uh, the renovation of a home. It could mean... Um, increased responsibilities connected with home by, for instance, buying a home, uh, increased duties and responsibilities uh, towards maybe looking after a parent. That's, that's also very, very possible. Maybe doing certain like tangible, like tasks for, uh, for them. Saturn for you, my dear Sagittarius rules, also your second house. So I feel like you're going to be putting money into home related matters quite a lot. I'll just, I'll just put it out there. If you feel like you no longer want to live long term in the place that you're in, I would uh, recommend starting to make and focusing your efforts onto a long term plan as to where you want to live for the long um, for the long run. The home itself might need repairs with Saturn transiting this this part of your chart, especially if you live in an old house. So there could be like things that need to be replaced, restructured, reorganized at home uh, because of time just kind of like passing I'd, I'd say if you are a Capricorn Sun or a Capricorn rising in particular Saturn is of course your chart ruler Capricorn risings and it's going to transit your third house um, from the 7th of March of this year until January February of 2024 now, this is a time to really commit to learning something, to becoming a student for the long run once again. Um, it is a great time to commit to learning something that feels hard, but that feels necessary, I would um, I would say. I don't know, something like maybe taking driver's uh, license classes um, or just kind of like something that allows you to maybe connect with a, a deeper, more sensitive side of uh, side of yours. Uh, you could commit to a writing project, like writing a thesis, very, very possibly writing your book. This is the time to write your book. I, I, I would, uh, I would say it may feel like communication, uh, expressing yourself, um, using words becomes more, a little bit more burdensome and kind of like onerous. I think onerous is the word. Forgive me if I'm making words up once again. So you may feel like this pressure to kind of like speak in a manner that is very precise, that is very like factual, that is very to the point. Um, you may feel like your intelligence is tested throughout this period. You could also experience delays when it comes to uh, exams and classes and courses throughout this period. And if you've got siblings, siblings could go through like a process of increased like responsibility or maturation in their life. What I like is the period between June of this year until January, February of 2024, especially June and January, February, because Jupiter is nicely aspecting Saturn in uh, Pisces in your third house. It feels like whatever it is that you're learning, whatever it is that you're writing, whatever it is that you're studying and you're committing to over a long period of time, my dear Capricorns, there's a part of you that really enjoys it. There's a part of you that kind of like sees the fun in it, that sees how this kind of like broadens your horizons that sees maybe how this is going to contribute to long-term enjoyable stability in your life uh, you might also be finding that your your efforts into being a better communicator are helping your romantic life lovely capricorns so not bad not bad at all if you um if you ask me if you are an aquarius sun or an aquarius rising in particular okay saturn is entering your second house of income 7th of March until February of 2026. It is a great time to look at your budget and see, okay, what do I need to remove from my expenses? It is a time to become airtight with your budget, to be like, okay, no more, no more messing about, no more like random expenses, no more like I don't know, like buying shots for everyone at the bar. No more like avoiding looking at your bank statement. No, it is time to take your finances and your long-term financial security very seriously, to set goals, to set objectives, to clean up your expense uh, list, um, to really also put effort into becoming better at whatever it is, whatever resources you have to offer to the world to say, okay, I know that I've got a talent. I know that this is my resource. I know that this is something valuable. How can I become better at it? How can I become a master? How can I become proficient at it? 
it may feel like your resources are so your talents and resources are tested in the 3d material reality and sometimes you might have doubt and self-doubt there can be a lot of self-doubt with saturn transiting your second house which is why you may look for proof for tangible proof that you're really good at something such as like putting your your talents to the test such as getting i don't know like certificates and diplomas and um and things like that Saturn likes a tangible achievement. Um, you might also look for tangible long-term achievements financially throughout this period, and it is a great time to do so. Uh, what I like in the second half of 2023 is that Jupiter moving through your fourth house of home is nicely aspecting Saturn in your second house of income. So it feels like if you're being more serious, if you're saving money, if you're building your resources, which Saturn likes would like you to do, you can channel that money into growing from a property and home and family related perspective. So if you've been looking at, I don't know, like expanding the family, um, if you've been looking at, I don't know, like buying a bigger house, a bigger home, um, Saturn says save, don't waste money. Um, also prove yourself. Are you as valuable as you say you are? And do you deserve to be paid less or more? Um, you can use whatever it is that you're kind of like saving towards a greater kind of like loftier goal financially. Uh, some people are very afraid of this transit, Saturn moving through the second house of income because they say, oh, you're not going to have money. You're going to make less money. You're going to have less resources. That, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the case uh, unless Saturn is making some like really, really, really tense aspects. Yes, there could be some long-term, like significant, like major expenses that you're dealing with. They could be connected with your physical body. They could be connected maybe with your direction in life. They could also be connected with some of the things that you have avoided paying for. <laughs> so if there was anything that you've avoided kind of like looking at, I don't know, that you've avoided paying. Um, yes, there could be some significant expenses that cause a dent in your budget. It is a time to be cautious and disciplined uh, and set goals with money. That's my point, my dear uh, Aquarians. And if you are a Pisces sun or Pisces rising. Okay, so if you are a Pisces sun, I'd say that this is a time for you to mature and to really work on becoming who you want to be in this lifetime. So who you really want to be in the long term, uh, how you want to shine in this lifetime. It is really a time to work on that. Do you want to shine as an artist, as uh, a therapist? Do you want to shine as like someone who's who's made a positive impact through charitable activities? Um, it is a very like ego diminishing uh, transit. Um, your vitality levels could go a little bit down because the sun is like the battery and Saturn has this sort of like con contracting, it contracts things, it contracts everything that it touches. So there could be a little bit of like uh, decreased vitality. Uh, it could be time to really put effort into taking care of your heart, of your eyes and of your back, which from a medical perspective is a very kind of like, uh, these are all like solar uh, aspects of, of, of the physical of the physical body. Um, you may also feel the pressure to focus on an external achievement that uh, validates the qualities that you want to be acknowledged for. This could also be a time when uh, the ego builds defense walls around it. So really, 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 really careful with uh, with that. And because sometimes that manifests through like an excess of pride, kind of like a showing off uh, or uh, like really wanting to prove that you are the best. You are the most generous. You are the most compassionate. You are the most adaptable and, and, and things like and things like that. If you're a Pisces rising, Saturn moving through your first house of the physical body, um, from the 7th of March all the way until February of 2026 says it is time to take care of your body. It is time to take your body seriously. Go check on your teeth. Uh, get dental work done. Go check on your bones. Take care of your bones. Focus on uh, taking care of the physical structures of your um, of your physical existence, I, I, I would say. So of your incarnated of your incarnated body please forgive me for like repeating myself um 
there can be weight loss. It's not mandatory, but it is possible. Saturn moving through the first house. It is, it, it is also time to like really restructure your inner world. Who do you say you are? What is your outlook upon life? Your outlook upon life could be very serious and very disciplined. What I do like is the fact that Saturn is going to be nicely aspecting from the second half of the year. So from June onwards, uh, Jupiter in your third house, it feels like you're learning a lot of, around how to like take better care of your body you're learning a lot as to you're kind of like broadening your horizons in terms of who you want to be moving forward and who you no longer want to be uh what you should and should no longer put into your um into your physical body you're also stepping into this sort of like position of authority in terms of teaching others what you have learned from your own experience very very likely especially in the second half of the year my lovely pisces this is the update for all 12 zodiac signs, folks. It is a long transit, as I said, especially those of you who have uh, your angles and um, personal planets between zero and seven, eight degrees of mutable signs. You're the ones who are going to feel uh, this transit the most this year in 2023. Remember that sometimes Saturn in Pisces does want us to go the soft way. So it's like, can you have patience in going with the flow? Can you have patience in accepting what you cannot change? Can you have patience with yourself, with kind of like accepting your own like uh, weaknesses and limitations? Can you put effort into becoming more forgiving, including with yourself? These are very, very good questions to ask ourselves throughout this entire transit. Remember that if you would like to uh, understand at a deeper level how this transit is likely to impact you based on your unique natal chart, based on your own personal natal chart, um, we're, we're able to do that in a one-to-one -one astrological consultation, in a one-to-one -one astrological reading. When I do one-to-one -one astrological readings and consultations, we look at everything that's happening in your chart, uh, including from a forecasting perspective. We look at all the transits that are happening at the same time because that gives us a great deal of like um, information as to what are both the challenges and the opportunities and how everything fits into the wider context of your life um, when it comes to both the Saturn transit, but also all the other transits that are happening at the same time, especially when I do forecasting, I uh, utilize a combination of techniques, uh, transits, uh, annual perfections, secondary progressions, solar arc directions, the Firdaria. So uh, it's not just transits that we, uh, that we look at. So if you want the deeper, broader picture of what your ear ahead is likely to look like, how you're impacted on a personal level, on a granular level. This is the most uh, accurate type of forecast that you can go through because it is personalized to you. So general horoscopes such as this, these are exactly that. They are, uh, they are general. Also, if you have not had your natal chart analyzed and interpreted, that is the best starting point for everyone who's kind of like, becoming familiar with astrology because the natal chart is the root prediction. So it is in the natal chart that we see your life lessons, uh, your mission and purpose, uh, challenges, uh, talents, skills, what is working kind of like easier in your favor in this lifetime, what you're here to like put effort into. The natal chart is the root prediction. Um, and whatever happens then in the sky moving forward, so transits and so and so on, secondary progressions, solar arc directions, what they do is they activate the natal chart. They activate the uh, initial kind of like root prediction. That's why understanding the natal chart is key towards understanding who you are, uh, reconnecting with your soul's intentions, and then, only then, uh, I recommend looking at the timeline of your life. So understanding like what big life chapter you're in, how, how you can um, work in alignment with uh, the cosmic cycles and so on. So you can find me on my website, written in the stars astrology.com. And uh, I'm currently taking bookings for uh, the end of March at the time when I'm filming this. I don't know if like when I actually post this, uh, there will be any like uh, slots left in March, maybe like beginning of April. But yeah, just wanted to put put it on your uh, on your radar. Um, this is uh, 
the most significant uh, part of my work, my work one-to-one -one with, uh, with clients. And uh, also don't forget that you can support my channel by becoming a member. Um, members are uh, going to receive my eternal gratitude. It means a lot uh, to, to see people becoming members because that shows me that my work that I do here on, uh, on YouTube is useful and it is uh, appreciated. Or you can leave a, um, a thanks, a donation using the thanks button underneath this, uh, underneath this video. <sighs> Let us know how Saturn in Pisces plays out for you and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.